I'm Liz Lamory. Hi, I'm Dante Vega Lamory. I'm Alan Vega's son. I met Alan in late 1985, and we immediately connected. We were together for over 30 years. I became his wife and de facto manager, and I recorded numerous studio albums with him and a lot of material that is still unreleased from what he dubbed the Vega Vault. And I was raised by Alan and my entire childhood, and it was amazing to see how he balanced both his daily and professional lives with uh, everything that was going on, and I assisted him in many ways. I co-produced Invasion and Murder One, which is a 12-inch that is sponsored by Agnes B and released by our record label, Sacred Bones. Co-produced it with Jared Arto, who could not be here today because he's recording the next Vacant Lots record. So starting back in 2015, Jared Arto reached out to us. His band, The Vacant Lots, had recorded a cover version of an Alan Vega song, No More Christmas Blues. He sent it to me, I played it for Alan. Alan loved it. Fast forward, we started collaborating with Jared. Uh, we did a split single called Nike Soldier. Alan wasn't able to go into the studio, so I went in by myself. I found some material from the mid-90s and, and mixed it that day, brought it home. Alan said, oh my gosh, I said, Alan, you have no idea how much material we have recorded that is pre unreleased. And when he heard how good Nike Soldier sounded in 2015, 20 years later, he said, you know what? You should feel free to go into the, what he dubbed the Vega Vault and produce mater unreleased material and put it out. Knowing Jared and knowing that Jared really connected to Alan's minimalist aesthetic, after he passed, Jared and I produced It. Well, we didn't, pr we pr mastered It, which was the, his posthumous album. Then we went into the vault and we found a cluster of recordings that became the first lost album from the vault, Mutator, which came out on Sacred Bones, that Jared and I mixed and produced together. Alan left us a blueprint of clusters of songs that Jared and I are now putting together and releasing. So after Mutator, we started working on the next album, which is called Insurrection, and we unearthed Murder One, which is an unbelievable track. And I remember creating some of these sounds. Alan and I would go into the studio really to create sound. So, and every once in a while, we'd pull together a cluster of songs and release an album. But left behind, but not because they weren't compelling, were all these sounds and songs and recordings that didn't make it into released albums. So that's what we're, we're on a mission now to put those out um, under Alan's marching orders that, that that's a cool thing to do. Invasion, so that's Murder One. These two tracks are 20 years apart, which is really kind of cool. Murder One was probably recorded in about 95, 96, 97 maybe. And Invasion was a song that we decided to leave off of it, Alan's last album. So that was recorded between 2012 and 2015. Alan had pared it down to a very minimal version with very few lyrics. He would often do that. There's a song called Quasi on one, at one album where it's almost just all instrumental. So that was Invasion. We decided not to put it on it because we knew there'd be more releases. So Invasion was going to be the bridge to the next release. When it came time and Sacred Bones said, let's put out a 12 inch, we decided to do Murder One and Invasion to show that even though they're 20 years apart, there's a continuity of what Alan was doing throughout his creative career as a visual artist, as a musician, as you know, anything that he touched on creatively. The first time I met Agnes, uh, all I can remember was how amazingly loving she was as a person. You know, it was so, such a, a warmth and gentleness that was surrounding her aura. She was uh, an amazing, uh, generous, passionate person who would really understand um, the perspective of almost anyone about anything. And it was really astounding uh, to be in the presence of something like that who's so understanding, or someone who's so understanding. It was really great. Um, and her, her interactions with my dad were amazing to watch because they, they were just so 
they were so caring and loving towards each other. It was just like, it was, it was unbelievable kindness after kindness. And it was, you could understand how they, they really respected each other's craft and careers and throughout their whole accomplishments and their lives. And it, was, it was beautiful to see them kind of come together and whenever they collaborated or met each other. Agnes Fee and Alan Vega were of the same generation and had a very close relationship. Even though they didn't spend a lot of time together, when they did, you could see that there was a real genuine bond there. And Agnes always came across as someone who genuinely loved the arts, visual arts, music. I remember the first time meeting her was at the Deitch Project's solo exhibition of Alan Vega's sculptures in 2002. She flew over and was at the opening. And from there, over the years, some highlights of, of time with Agnes were when she brought suicide over for the 30th anniversary of Agnes B. It was an amazing event at the Olympus Theater. Patti Smith played, Sonic Youth, of course, suicide. It was so beautifully realized. And we also went to her, it was during Paris Fashion Week, so we went to her fashion show that week, and Patti Smith and Lenny Kay performed Because the Night on the runway. It was just an amazing time. And she also, over the years, um, would invite us, when she knew that Alan was performing in Paris, she would invite us over to come visit with her. We had a wonderful lunch with her once at the flagship store, where we sat in her office, and we saw a photo shoot on the roof, and she showed Dante, our, our son Dante was with us, she showed Dante her drafting table, and he sat there and did some drafting. But she was just so gracious. Uh, there was another event at her store where Alan exhibited some of his sculptures and also had a book signing. Alexandra Breton um, had written a book called Conversation with the Indian. So Agnes sat there for the book signing with Alan, and they chatted all night. Um, this must have been later, like 2014 or so. Um, but yeah, we have so many wonderful memories. She was always so supportive. And I know that she has a history of doing that with exhibiting art and music in her stores. And, and it really shows in her creative pursuits. And she's, she's an iconic designer and uh, very, very happy to have her sponsoring this release because Alan would be so proud of it and so happy that, that she has that connection still, that, that strong bond remains.